So if you look in your bulletins this morning, you'll notice that the title of my sermon is Trust. It is a scary word. I know this, beloved, because God has asked me to trust God in some ways and situations that I never thought possible. And yet I am here today alive to tell the story. Trust is a scary word. And that's exactly what Jesus is asking his disciples in our story today. And it's what he's asking of us as well, to trust him. And I don't know about you, but I'm having a really hard time trusting him right now. Right now I am saddened, and I am scared, and I am sickened by the way people in our country are treating one another. Riots, hate speech, protests, all because your candidate won. All because your candidate lost. And I can only imagine, beloved, what Jesus must be thinking of all of this. What must he be thinking of us? Can you imagine that? What Jesus must be thinking of our actions towards one another today? And so I find this scripture so perfect for today. Because Jesus tries to warn us, tries to remind us, but will we listen to his words? Jesus tells us to watch out for the doomsday deceivers, that many leaders are going to show up with forged identities claiming, I am the one, or the end is near. And he tells us, don't fall for that. When you hear of wars and uprisings, keep your head. Don't panic. This is routine history. It's happened before. It will happen again. And it's no sign of the end. Now, while Jesus doesn't exactly say the word, trust me, that's what he is implying here. Don't panic. Trust. <coughs> Jesus says all this is routine history. <coughs> It's going to be okay. I can almost hear him saying, don't worry, Christ Church. I've got this. Trust me. A trust is a scary word. Jesus goes on and he says, nation will fight against nation and ruler will fight against ruler over and over again. Huge earthquakes will occur in various places. And what did Marcy lift up in prayer today, prayers for the people of New Zealand. There will be earthquakes, there will be famines, and you will think at times that the very sky is falling. Jesus tells us all that. We know that there are going to be wars. Some of you have fought in those wars. Others of you have prayed for people that have fought in those wars. There will be natural disasters. You know this too. We've been praying for the people in Charlotte, North Carolina, for the people in Haiti, now for the people in New Zealand. Jesus tells us about them too. Don't panic, he says. Trust me. I've got this. But trust is a scary word. And then he goes on to say, before any of this happens, beloved, they will arrest you. They will hunt you down and they will drag you to court and to jail. And it's going to go from bad to worse. Dog eat dog. Everyone is at your throat because you carry my name. <coughs> Jesus is, is telling us here that we will be persecuted because of what we believe. Because we believe in him as our savior. And the world will hate us. And the world will drag us down, all because we are his children. And beloved, when you carry that label of Christian, 
That means two things that God asks of you, that Jesus asks of you. One, he asks you to love God with all your hearts, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And that type of love requires trust. But we all know about trust. Trust is a scary word. And as his children, he, he asks us one other thing. He asks us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. He doesn't put any pre-qualifier in front of that word neighbor. I don't know if you ever noticed that. But he doesn't say, love your neighbor, the person that's just like you. He's asking those of us who voted for Hillary to love our Trump supporters. He's asking for those of us that voted for Trump to love the Hillary supporters. He's asking you to love people who are different from you. And that type of love requires trust. But we all know that trust is a scary word. Jesus tells us that as his children, we will stick up for those who are being persecuted. Because that's what Jesus would have us do. And as his children, we'll speak out when we see injustice. Because that's what Jesus would have us do. And as his children, he will ask us to love those people that no one else loves. Because that's what Jesus would have us do. That is why everyone will be at our throats, beloved. Because we will carry his name proudly as Christians. Everyone will be at our throats because as Christians, we will act differently <coughs> towards those of us who are different religions and different customs. We will love our Muslim brothers and sisters and our Jewish neighbors and sisters and our black brothers and sisters and our brown brothers and sisters because that is what Jesus is calling us to do. And everyone will be at our throats. Because as Christians, we will take care of the ones that are on the margins. This morning, you lifted those people in prayer, those that are sick, and those that are homeless, and those that are drug addicted, and those that are mentally ill, and those that are prisons. We will love all of God's children, because that's who they are. And everyone will be at our throats, because as Christians, we will love one another especially those the rest of our country refuses to love. <clears throat> we will love our lesbian neighbors and our gay neighbors and our bisexual neighbors and our transgender neighbors and our queer neighbors, the people that often get thrown on the outsides because Jesus asks us to love our brothers and sisters as hard as that is to do sometimes. <laughs> because all of us, beloved, are God's children. Because of that love, Jesus tells us that, that we will end up on the witness stand, that we will be called to testify. <coughs> but make up your mind not to worry about it. And I love that. It's almost like I can picture a big eraser just erasing all that worry that's going on now. Make up your mind not to worry about it because Jesus tells us he'll give us the words He's going to put the words in your mouth, Art, so you know what to say. Jake, when you're struggling, he's going to put those words right in there, and you'll know what to say. Same with you, Aaron. When people are making fun, when people refuse to care for one another, Rick, he's going to give you the words. Dorothy, those words will just come singing right out of your mouth. The choir's going to sing about them. When you are struggling, Jesus says, I will give you the words that you need and then you know what's going to happen to those accusers? They're going to be reduced to stammers and stutters. But they're not going to know what to say. Because Jesus is going to give you the words, beloved. So make up your mind not to worry about it. That's a hard thing to do. Don't worry. Jesus is telling us not to panic. 
but to trust him. I will give you the words that you need. I'll put the words in your mouth when you say I love you, when you can't say I love you, when you don't know how to say I'm here for you. I don't know if you've, you've read the, the devotion that went around yesterday on the UCC website, but people are wearing safety pins. Safety pins to let others know that they are a safe person and, and that they will care for you in need. We're studying forgiveness in our Bible studies, and my favorite story is one of Corey Ten Boom. Do you know who Corey Ten Boom is? Corey was imprisoned in Ravensbrück concentration camp during World War II. Her sister and her father and her mother were killed in that concentration camp. There was one guard who was particularly evil towards her and her family. <coughs> After the war was over and Corey was free, she went out into the churches. <coughs> And she proclaimed God's love and forgiveness. And wouldn't you know it, one night that guard walked into the church. And after the worship service, after he had heard Corey's words about forgiveness and love, he went up to her and he said, Fräulein, I heard your words. Isn't it wonderful that Christ washes away all of our sins? Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? And he reached out his hand. And Corey, she could not take his hand. She, she could not physically lift her hand up to shake the hand of the monster who had imprisoned her. And so Corey went to the Lord in prayer and she said, God, I can't forgive him, but I know that you can. Give me the strength to lift my hand in forgiveness. And she said a strange peace came over her and her hand flew up of its own accord. And she shook that man's hand and she embraced him and she knew she couldn't do it alone. God had given her what she needed. And this is Jesus' promise to you too, beloved. That not only will he put the words in your mouth, but that he will give you the actions. He will show you how to love as he first loved us. Even your brothers and your sisters, your relatives and your friends, some of you will be killed, he says. There's no telling who will hate you because of me. <clears throat> who hates you, beloved? Interesting way to think about the question, isn't it? We often think about who we hate, but rarely who hates us. Who hates you because of the way you love like Jesus loves? Don't panic, he says. Trust me, I've got this. Every detail of your body and your soul, even the hairs on your head, is in my care, and nothing of you will be lost. In other words, he knows you, beloved. He knows your heart. He knows how frightened we are. And he knows how sad we are. And he knows how sick we are of brothers and sisters fighting one another. And he asks us to trust him, to stay with him. What will that trust look like for you this week, next week? For me, it's getting up each day and praying, God, not my will, but your will be done. And then getting up out of bed and putting one foot in front of the other and going through my day asking continually, God, help me to love. How will you trust God this week? 
this month, this year. Because that's what Jesus is asking of you, to trust him, to stay with him to the very end. In the midst of whatever it is that you're struggling with or in the midst of whatever it is that you're grateful for, trust him. You won't be sorry. You will be saved.